sustainability at the Rotterdam port. How different stakeholders can interpret key values and how that impacts plans and developments. Who is against sustainability? Almost nobody would say they are against sustainability. Even die-hard climate deniers want clean air and resource management. But what problems arise when we try to define its meaning? What is sustainability? What is sustainable development? When the concept was launched in 1987 by the United Nations Brundtland Commission, the definition was relatively clear. Sustainable development meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. But since then, it has become a container concept. Everybody gives it their own meaning and understands it in a way that suits their own interest. Sustainability can refer to everything from clean air and beautiful nature to reduction of CO2 emissions and poverty reduction to continual profit and growth. We can see some of these values represented in the common three pillar approach to sustainability, which focuses on balancing people, planet and profit. The idea of sustainable development represents a system of values. And values are always created, interpreted and put into practice by people. Values are rarely fully universal. Two people who seem very similar can have very different stakes, perceptions and goals that shape what values they hold. And even when a value is commonly shared, like sustainability, different stakeholders can interpret that value differently by emphasizing one aspect more than another, or by ignoring, ignoring certain issues. To illustrate the value conflicts that confront sustainable development, we will look at the Maaslakte 2 extension plan for the Rotterdam port. In the 1990s, Rotterdam port was the biggest in the world, until the rise of China. Now Rotterdam has been knocked down to the tenth largest. In an effort to regain its spot at the top, Rotterdam planned to build a new port in the sea by reclaiming land and enlarging the Netherlands by 2000 hectares. However, due to pressure from stakeholders like European regulators and concerned citizens, the port had to be developed sustainably. It was established that the Maastrachter 2 project had to embrace three main values of sustainability. Ecology, by consist consistently considering nature, the environment and energy. Economy, by maintaining and strengthening the position of and quality of the port of Rotterdam. And society, by improving the quality of life in the city and the region. These values were then specified in order to embed sustainability into the design, construction and operation of Maasvlakte 2. For example, the streamlined round-off shape of the port is compact, safe and reduces impact on the North Sea. The port is partly built using recycled materials and an energy-saving sand extraction technique. And the companies using the port must abide by standards that reduce waste and energy use. Additionally, the port started a series of projects to conserve, restore and establish the natural landscape around the port, including new dunes and seabed protection. The way sustainability was defined and implemented for the port was the result of debate, discussion and compromise among a wide range of stakeholders and experts from industry, government and citizens. We can easily imagine that if only one of these stakeholders was involved, then the meaning of sustainability would greatly shift. Perhaps business would focus on sustainable stream of revenues, while a regulatory agency might focus instead on sustaining the local ecosystem. Rather than assuming that sustainability meant the same to everybody, the Maaslakte 2 project took an inclusive approach that confronted possible disagreements 
about the value rather than avoid or ignore it. In 2008, a quality round table was created that would monitor and evaluate the Rotterdam main port development project, of which Mass Factor 2 is the main part. The group is composed of 13 members, six government bodies, six NGOs, and the Rotterdam Port Authority. Under the guidance of an independent chairperson, ex-minister Sibylla Decker, representatives from these groups come together to discuss the progress of the project and solutions for the problems that arise. With this comprehensive plan for establishing, implementing and monitoring sustainable development, what go could go wrong? When it comes to a value as important and contested as sustainability, you can never be sure. The conflict has been truly resolved. One stakeholder still did not agree with the Mass Factor 2 development plan. Defense of the Earth threatened to bring a new law seat. The fans believed the project did not enough to address CO2 emissions. Rather than turn the fans away or ignore their position, the port invited them into a dialogue where they could reach a satisfying compromise. The port would see to it that harmful emissions would be reduced by 10%, more than what, what was expected in the environmental impact studies, more than legally obliged. In exchange, the fans of the earth would stop its resistance. In 2011, a detailed plan was presented, which contains a whole range of proposed measures, including the promotion of clean shipping and the exploration of alternative energy sources. So, what do we learn from this example? Value conflicts don't just arise when people want different things, like efficiency versus quality, or security versus privacy. They can arise even when people share a common value, but they interpret it in different ways. Or they have a different hierarchy of sub-values. Or they support different ways of specifying the values. Stakeholders are motivated by their own interests and ideals. Nevertheless, an inclusive approach can help overcome conflict by ensuring that diverse positions are represented. It is important to realize that conflicts about values like the one faced by Mass Factor 2 project, are never completely solved. A new stakeholder might emerge with a new interpretation of sustainability or a new understanding of the situation. This means that planners and engineers must remain aware of the fact that values, stakeholders and negotiations are constantly shifting.